Well, 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 here we are in a kitchen. I know that this is not really the sort of place you'd be very surprised to see me in. But we're all at home yet again, boys. I'm really very sorry, and it's a terrible letdown. Um, however, I think that you should think of being at home over lockdown as a little bit of an opportunity. An opportunity to learn a few more life skills. Now, I know that this is lockdown three times around, but there's always something in life that you can learn, and I think that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, um, firstly, I think I need to explain to you where I am because you probably won't recognise much of the background. It's probably too dark to see out of the window, but I am at the house of my bubble family, the Parkinsons. And uh, these are the very generous people um, who are filming me today uh, for Chef's Club. And what's going to happen is, is when I come down and visit them, um, I'm going to cook and we are going to ha ha make a video of this and I'm going to post it, with a bit of luck, on Firefly. Now you know, all of you, that Firefly is the program where you have to log on each morning, where you get your links to your lessons, where you get instructions for your work, uh, where you can find messages, where you can watch assembly. But I hope you also know that there's an enormous resources and activities section in Firefly which is going to keep you occupied at all hours of the day and hopefully at night you'll be sleeping of course and not gaming uh, and there's inside all those activities there's loads and loads of things to do of all variety of activity including the chef's club and the chef's club you're going to see that the uh, area is divided into courses now my little area is main courses and there are lots of recipes there. And each week, what I'm going to do is make a video to illustrate and to show you how to cook the dish that's on that uh, uh, that particular week. So this week, we're going to start with the risotto, which is our favourite dish. And uh, we're going to learn how to make it pretty much from scratch. Now, this is a risotto that I call risotto alla tirolese. Now, it's a dish essentially that's in, with rice and mushrooms, a bit of chicken stock, and some ham. So let's just take you through a few of these ingredients. Uh, you should be able to see on the special uh, workbench cam that we've installed up here, uh, a bit of salt and pepper. Now you guys are all good cooks, and I know that you know you need to use salt and pepper. We've got a little bit of rice. That's risotto rice. It's a special kind of rice. You can't use any old thing to make a risotto because it doesn't not all rice has the same absorbent or starchy qualities that you're going to need. So this is a risotto rice. Your mum and dad will know what this is. Uh, there are several types. This is carnaroli, but there's also arborio, violani, nano. You know, you know, go and find some. It's very easy to get. Right here, you have uh, a bit of parmesan. Okay, That's something that you add in at the end with a little knob of butter. Here's a picture of the uh, Carnaroli rice packet right there. That's what it looks like in a, in a UK supermarket. You can find them almost anywhere. And here are the, sh the mushrooms. So the mushrooms in what looks like a crisp packet. Are they crisps, you ask? No, they're not. They're dried mushrooms. These ones are Italian. They're called fungi porcini. And what you do is, you don't have to use these. Well, you can just use any old mushroom if you really want, but these have got a lot of flavour. You sort of soak them in boiling water for 10 minutes and then you fry them up. And this is what I've done. I've pre-prepared them, because obviously we don't want to be here until midnight. And I fried them up in a little bit of butter, a bit of garlic and white wine. And I've also used a, a few other types of wild mushroom that I happen to quite like. Uh, and that takes about five or 10 minutes, but you've got to do it in advance. Uh, what are the rest of the ingredients? Well. You have got some white wine, which you're going to need to use in a minute because it provides a bit of flavour. Of course, boys, you're not going to drink it at the same time. That's what your mum and dad are going to be there to do, and you need to offer them a glass if that's the thing that they like. Um, we got a, a red wine, but we're not going to put this in any of the food. This is a, a nice Italian red wine that we're going to drink later. Uh, and there we have some of the basic ingredients. An onion, which I've uh, cut up very thin. Now you can chop it up as uh, finely or as, as you like. You can have it in strips or in cubes. It's up to you. It depends on what you like. And some garlic. Now I happen to like garlic, so I put in quite a lot. And here we have a ham. This ham came from an Iberico ham at Christmas time. Okay, so it's got lots and lots and lots of flavour. Over here you've got a bit of a stock. All right. Now risotto 
is not really about the quality of the onion or the ham or the parmesan or even the mushrooms. What will make a really good risotto is a really good stock. So you and your family, you'll all have your own stock, ing stock ingredients and ideas. That is a chicken stock or a turkey stock. Um, meta yeah, is a turkey chicken, stock. Chicken. It's a chicken stock, okay? To which I've added a few little offcuts of the ham to give it even more flavour and the water that I uh, soaked my mushrooms in. So it's going to have a really deep flavour. That's what's going to make an excellent final taste. And in this pan here, I've started ahead of time a little bit so we don't have to sort of watch it sort of doing things. We have got a, a knob of butter and some, um, a little bit of olive oil and some little fat parts of the ham for even more flavour. Okay, so I'm switching on my, um, the little uh, um, ring here. So we're going to wait for that to sort of uh, heat up a bit. And to that, we're going to add our onion here, okay? We're going to make sure it goes in, not in one big lump. It's pre-sliced, remember? All right. It's going to take a little while, I think, to, uh, to sort of get back up to temperature. But this is what you do. Now, you don't want to sort of cook this too fast. You don't want it to burn, because when onion burns, when it gets black around the edges, guys, it develops a very bitter taste and that's going to come through in your final sort of dish. So you want to be careful about your onions. You want to really soften them. And what's going to happen is that the onions are going to um, soften down and release their juices into the oil that's in the pan. <laughs> and that's another bit of flavour. So you can see that making a risotto is about layering bits of flavour one on top of each other until you get something you know, at the end which is really, really tasty. Now, you can see here the uh, my um, special uh, hot cam is uh, working well, which I think it is. You can see here I'm moving it around a bit to separate it all out. Now, a lot of people would prefer it if the onions, as I said earlier, were very, very finely chopped. That's quite a good idea, I've got to be honest, but what we quite like with this risotto, it was a bit more rustic, is we want to leave them in a slightly larger bit so we can see them come through in the, um, the final dish. Anyway, so we're just sort of waiting here at the moment for those to soften. Um, I'll talk about the rice in a minute. I suppose we could talk about holidays, couldn't we? So you, it's Christmas time, so I suppose you guys have been hopefully at home, most of you. I know that some of you weren't, weren't able to get home. I'm really sorry about that. It's a difficult time, isn't it, that you're living through? But it is all going to get better. It will eventually. You must have faith. Now, I was at home myself, and it was quite nice. Very quiet, just with my mum. And, uh, yeah, very quiet, actually. Spent most of the time trying to heat the house up. Um, fetching wood and lighting fires and doing bits and pieces. I wonder what day of the week you're going to make this on. We, we all eat on Saturdays, don't we, guys? Certainly do. Yeah, end of the week. Nice, uh, nice meal together. Okay. And um, it's quite often uh, I have a little helper here. I'm not sure whether they're going to want to come today because they're a bit shy. Maybe from um, round two. Round two. Okay, round two, director. Very good. Okay, Mike. Um, so uh, you'll be able to see when we make other dishes. Uh, you can cook along. All right. Now, the key thing that you need to do if you want to do this is to understand that it, everything like this comes in stages. The first stage of any dish that you make, as I'm sure. Your mum and dad will have told you if you if you cooked with them is to get everything ready first. That's called prepping, preparation. Like when you do prep, or well, we're meant to call it private study, but you know what I mean. You get everything ready first ahead of time. You see, I've chopped this up, I've chopped that up, I've weighed out my rice, I've grated my parmesan. That's prepping. So that's the first stage. Now in a risotto, the cooking actually comes in two stages, and what we're doing now. A little bit ahead of time, because at the moment it's only 10 to 5 here, so 
So we're not going to eat risotto at sort of, uh, you know, quarter past five. We're, make, we're doing the first stage here. And we can then leave that until later and film and do the second stage of the cooking then. Now what's happening in the pan here is that the onions are softening up. I'm keeping them moving around because I don't want them to burn. All right? I don't want them to burn. Now, another thing you've got to remember about cooking is that it involves your ears quite as much as your eyes. You need to sort of understand what's sort of happening in there. And when you're frying things, you can, you can hear how much things are frying. Okay, so if you hear it's making a lot of noise, and you've gone off over there because you fancy a, a chocolate bar or a sweet or something, and you've you know, got a telephone call from your best mate, and you hear a lot of noise in the pan, you know that something perhaps is cooking a little bit too fast. So you've got to make sure that you keep a careful eye on this. Now these onions here have gone lovely and soft, lovely and soft. And um, I think that it's going to be nearly time to put in the next ingredient, which is going to be a bit of garlic right here and some of the ham. So here the garlic goes. Now the reason you don't put the garlic in first is that you don't, it, it tends to cook much quicker than onion and you don't want it to burn, okay? You want to get that full garlic, full on garlic taste. Okay, here we go. That's coming together very nicely now. Leave that for a minute. I'll just talk to you about something else first. I'm turning around the other way here because, as you can see, here is the sink. And isn't it beautifully tidy? Because uh, Mrs. P was uh, tidying it earlier on. Crucial thing about cooking, okay, lesson number two, after you prep, you make sure that you keep tidying as you go along. Now, if all of you did that in the changing room, we'd never have any problem with the changing rooms and they'd be absolutely marvellous. That's what you've got to do in the kitchen, okay? So I've got a little bit of water ready in the sink here. I'm giving this a quick rinse because that's all it needs. And I've already washed that up, okay? Keep your area tidy, tidy as you go, okay? Now, back, back to the results. Now I think, now, we're time for the next bit. Here's the rice. Now there's three of us eating tonight. I, we're adults. Now, you may think I like massive portions, and actually I don't. I think 50 grams per person, if you've got lots of other things to put in, is enough. But if you're super duper hungry, I guess you could put in a little bit more than 60 grams per person. So we've got 50 grams per person here, three people, year four, 150 grams, year eight, can you make that one work? Okay, in it goes. Now you think, well, why is he doing that? You're supposed to boil rice in water. Aha, not quite. In a risotto, you add the rice to the oil and onions and garlic, this, this in its initial mixture in other words. And what you want to do that for is so that the rice gets coated in that beautifully flavoured oil that we've just created here. Yeah? And when that happens, when you, when you continue to cook, it doesn't stick together and it improves the flavour. So here you have, it's coming you don't need to do it for very long, just move it around a little bit like that, you see? And after this comes another important ingredient. It's heating up very nicely, every grain is coated. And after that comes another ingredient, which is the wine. Now, you can be reasonably generous, you're going to have to ask your mum and dad. You don't have to add wine at all, but I like to. So, here we go. I guess that um, I've just basically just covered the rice. It must be about two very large glasses, one large glass. It's up to you. Right, now at that stage, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the rice boil, uh, the uh, liquid boil, I beg your pardon, so that the alcohol in the wine boils off. And then we're gonna switch off the heat and that is the end of the first part 
So here we go. Oh, you can hear the beeps. Zero. And that, guys, for the moment, is that. And you can leave that for several hours now, and you cover it, and you can come back to it at a later stage when you're ready to cook and finish off the dish for your meal. And that's that. See you a bit later. Okay then, welcome back gentlemen, and here we are in part two of our risotto making session. Just a recap, you remember that we cooked off the onions and the garlic in a little bit of butter, and I actually used a bit of bacon fat as well, which is a cheeky secret ingredient there. And then we added um, the garlic and uh, the, the little bits of ham that we wanted to use a little bit later so they didn't burn, and we fried the rice off to coat every grain with oil. And then we added wine. Now, uh, we're always quite generous with wine in this house. It's just part of the way we've been brought up, okay? But you don't have to do that. Now, I wonder whether you can remember back to the very beginning uh, when I was introducing all the ingredients. Now, Handy's uh, cam here, looking at this. This is our stock, okay? Now, now we're gonna start using that. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start heating this up. And uh, here we go. I'm just using some uh, technology here. Uh, here we are. Okay, that's gonna start getting warm. The stock is already quite hot and we're gonna add this to the rice bit by bit. And at the end, when the rice is cooked, after I would say about 10 to 12 minutes, then we're gonna add our beautiful mushroom here and then some parsley, okay, which we're going to chop up. Top tip, how to chop parsley using a pair of scissors and some parmesan, and then we'll be done. Uh, except for one thing, always remember, salt and pepper, very, very important. But it's probably best not to salt and pepper too much before you finish cooking your dish, because you never quite know how salty some of the ingredients are gonna be. For example, stock tends to be a bit salty. Now, this is um, heating up a little bit here. Uh, I'm now going to put in a ladle right of this stock possibly another one as well ah oh, look at that and eventually when the pan starts heating up we are going to be in the business now this stage of making a risotto is a bit repetitive most of the time you tend to add stock three times and you just got to keep going just keep stirring it in there's a reason why you ought to try to keep stirring as much as you can. You can't really leave it alone too much, all right? And that's because the more you stir the rice, the more the starch sort of is released from the grain. Okay, forgive me for not being too scientific, and it makes it creamier. Now, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very important chef here, and I don't really do stirring terribly well. And uh, <laughs> in this house, of course, we have uh, very many apprentices that are here. Uh, so we're going to introduce one very, very talented young lady. Uh, here we are. This is my assistant chef for the evening. Uh, this is Imogen. She's about to go on an international cooking course in New York, but unfortunately can't because of COVID. Now, Imogen is going to keep stirring here. Off you go. Come on, keep going, girl. Uh, which means I can sort of sit here and relax and talk to you. Uh, she's going to stir in sort of nice, sort of gentle, sort of circular motions. By the way, uh, gentlemen, just in case you were wondering, uh, when you cook in a kitchen, it's always a good idea not to be in bare feet, just in case you step on something hot or cold. Okay, just remember that for next time. Right. Um, I had a couple of other things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, we're here in, uh, we're in London, as it happens, uh, because that's where um, my bubble family, the Parkies, that's where they live. And uh, they are very, very generous in having sort of arranged for us these little sessions to be filmed. So we've got them to thank that we can do all this because I could never do this on my own. And I'm not as talented as Mr. Jones, you know, and I can't sort of set these things up like he can. So um, at the end of this film, you're going to see a special credit page. It's going to be Parky TV. And that is uh, the special company that uh, uh, Michael and Claire use 
to produce all sorts of videos like this, uh, including sort of live streaming from the churches and from local concerts and things like this. It's fantastic that we're able to do it. And, may, and it does go to show that even in lockdown, you can take up a new habit. Because if I'm right, Parky, this is something that sort of he really started to develop when the first lockdown happened. And it's all come to, he's got a huge storeroom of cameras and impressive equipment, and he makes sure that he uses them. And everybody in the family gets involved. And that's a really good thing to do. You should try doing that in uh, lockdown. Set yourself a big challenge, because you don't have to work all the time, do you? I mean, yeah, don't tell the headmaster I said that, but immediately you don't have to work all the time. How's it going then? This is quite hard work. Is it holding up the boob? <laughs> Ah, yes, indeed. And operating the camera. And operating the camera. Is that hard work, Modge? Um, yes. Yeah, speak to the camera because the boys are watching. Yeah, there'll be thousands of them. So, what's happening here? Just, just explain what's happening here. Um, it's bubbling. It's bubbling, okay. Now, I talked to you earlier on, guys, about using your ears as well as your, as well as your eyes when you're cooking. Okay, you can hear that it's bubbling away quite nicely there. And what's happening is that the rice is absorbing that stock. All of that flavor that's in there is going into this, uh, the, the rice dish, okay? Now, Imogen, can you put another ladle full, or maybe a ladle full and a half, in there? Wonderful. Oh, I'd go for another one. I wish you could smell this, fellas. It smells absolutely fantastic. Really delicious. But really, you know, a risotto doesn't have to be this flavour. You could make a risotto any flavour you like. Well, within reason, you want to want one, probably wouldn't want to make one with bananas or grapefruit or something. But you can make risotto with vegetables, with a beautiful vegetable stock. All of those old bits of the ends of vegetables that you throw away, don't do that! Put them all in a beautiful stock and it's fantastic and you can eat it as a soup um you could do one with beef stock you could do one with fish ah oh, those are the best actually the very best ones are the ones you make with lobsters because oh. you take all the meat out of the lobster and then you use all of the the head all the bits that you think oh i don't want to eat that throw it away you make a beautiful sort of seafood stock with that and then you use that to make cook your rice and the depth of flavor is fantastic and I promise you that if you learn how to make a risotto properly, keep stirring up, uh, you've got some, a dish that you can adapt for life. Uh, and by the way, you know, I, I tell you this, and I have, you know, I have my helpers here, I'll tell it in front of them. You know, any future partner that you might decide to marry, they'll be very impressed if you can cook. So it's an incredibly important life skill. In my country, if a man can't cook, He's not really a man. I'm not going to say what it's like in this country, but that's what I think. Tell us about the truffle risotto, Mr. Edwards. The truffle risotto. <laughs> well, it's a it's a dish that you have when you are uh, are treating yourself. Um, now, fellows, you're going to have to ask Mr. Hoskins when you next see him about the truffle risotto. Um, the truffles are these; they're called tubers. They're not really mushrooms. They're things that grow on the roots of trees and they look like what do they think they look like Mike? They, they look like um, black stones and they're very hard and they almost think well what's that sort of a spongy sort of fungi type thing it looks very very unappetizing and they come from in the ground and they use and you and, and they use pigs and dogs to go and find them but they are worth huge amounts of money um, almost more than their weight in gold actually uh, and you they are used in things like risottos um, because they have this incredible earthy mushroomy taste that's quite sort of unusual and a mushroom risotto uh, with truffle oil or something like that is a, is a cheaper alternative to to actually using real truffles but when you do get the opportunity to have that on your travels when we all get to travel again and, and your mum and dad are keen to go to Italy to the lakes or to the north and they see truffle risotto on the menu, you be very nice and you ask whether you can try it because I can tell you, you won't. It's very great, very good indeed. Now, we're not going to film all of this in real time because this part of the thing takes a, a little bit of a, a, a while.
you've got to keep stirring and you need to keep adding ladles of, of stock. Probably about, you know, you add, add I would add it three times, okay? Uh, we're on our second go here. I suspect we're going to, because we've added quite small ladles, we're going to add maybe three more and then it'll be done. Now, you need to keep testing it, all right? Now, if I test the one grain of rice here now, there it is, you've got to be careful because it's hot, okay? And I test that. Hmm. You can sense that the, the rice is not quite cooked yet. So you, have, you know that you need to keep going for a little bit. You want it still to be a bit hard in the middle, a tiny, 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 weedsy bit. But what you don't want is to, it to be mushy. I think it's time for some more uh, ladles. So Imogen, are you um, working from home at the yes. moment? And how are you finding that? Um, much better than the last lockdown. Why is it better than in the last lockdown, Tommy? Because my teachers weren't prepared last lockdown for a while. You do say the most helpful things on television. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, last lockdown you were set a lot of work, right? And this lockdown you get a bit more live teaching? Uh, we don't get live teaching, but I have a, a Zoom lesson, well, a Zoom call with my entire class every morning. Well, that's very, very good. So, guys, you can see, you, we're, you know, you're really lucky. You're getting a lot of live Zoom stuff. So that's not what everybody gets. Okay, so Imogen, maybe not as quite as lucky as you are. So when you are doing your live Zooms, you make sure that you're on time and that you're on form and that you don't muck around by you know using the chat function and sticking up silly hands and stuff like that okay how's it looking now Imogen is it all getting absorbed there uh, yes. and what do you think it smells like um, well, I mean does it smell good does it smell bad what does it smell like it smells nice it smells nice okay well that's a good thing now I guess that uh, we're getting towards the time quite soon where we're going to add a final ladle full and we're going to add the rest of our mushrooms. But in the meantime, we're going to pause. One of the things that I will have told you in your PSHE lessons, uh, if, certainly if you're in year seven and eight, but I'm, I'm sure that Mr. Hoskins has told you if you're in year five, year five and six as well, and Miss Safdari has told you if you're in year four, is that when we're all at home here, it's a quite challenging situation for many families. Now, it's challenging for you because you know you can't be at school. We want you to be at school and we rather miss you, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> we do miss you when you're not here. But when you're at home, you need to make sure that you adopt a school attitude in the week, that you have a sensible routine. You get up on time, you have a shower, you take daily exercise, you turn up for your classes, you behave well, you do all the work. All of those things that you'd normally do at school. And a good idea to remind you of all those things is possibly, if you can manage it, actually, why don't you wear your school uniform when you go to your Zoom lessons? Then it'll remind you that you're at school. But the other, and this even more important thing about being at home, is that mum and dad, they're at home as well, with you probably, and they're also probably working as well. And they've got to look after you too. And they've got all these other pressures that normally they may not have if you're at school. So it's incredibly important that you play your part. Now, Imogen here, and Bridget, and Ruth, and Francis, who are the children of the house. Or I should say the young ladies, naturally. Uh, put a bit more stock in that, will you? The young ladies of the house, they all play their part, they're really good and they help out. And that's possibly, I think, one of the most important things that you could do uh, to, 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 to sort of assist and to make life really easy for uh, you know, your mum and your dad and the rest of your family in lockdown. Help out, become a person who's eager to assist people, to lend a hand. That would be really good. And by cooking, making a dish like that, that will be very uh, well received and it'll be very kind of you to offer to do that. Now I think we're getting slowly towards the end of our uh, dish here. Much can I take over for a bit? Mm -hmm. How are you thinking it's looking? Are you happy with that? Yes. Have we, have we tasted a grain of rice? Of rice? 
Okay, here we go. Yeah, I think that's good. Now, I think one more. What do you think? So it's still got a little bit of bite. Now the Italians call that al dente. And most people think that only applies to spaghetti. Now it does leave it a little bit harder. It also applies to rice. But if I've been to Italy, a lot of the risottos I've eaten, the rice has been quite al dente. So we're coming to the end here, and you notice that as I was waffling on and on and on and on, Imogen was really doing her weekly workout and stirring. It's pretty hot over here. Uh, and the water, the stock, has been absorbed Okay, and we're nearly at the, at the point where we can say that we finished the dish. What we're going to do is we are going to very carefully, this is my mushrooms, remember that. We're going to add these to the pan now. Okay. Stir them in nicely. There you go. I've got my water ready, literally. We're going to chop up some parsley. Never chop up parsley in advance, okay, because it'll lose all the flavour. Quick way of chopping up loads of herbs, stick them in a pot, something like this, a mug, a plastic beaker I use at home, and then get your scissors in, and that does it very, very effectively, very quickly. So that's ready for the end. I think we're nearly there. All right, pepper, very important. Let's go. I'd say about, um, oh, why don't you? 10, 15 turns of the pepper mill. There you go, stir then. Salt. Salt. Very important in cooking. A lot of people are frightened of it. Don't be frightened of salt. Just don't put in too much of it. Too much salt in your diet you know, is not a very good thing. However, it does bring up flavour quite a lot. Um, so we're going to put in a little bit amount at, f at first because things like this Parmesan cheese is quite salty in itself. We don't want to overdo it. There we go. We'll do that for the, to start with. Right. Now, as you can see here, guys, all around, Imogen's been doing a cracking job. All, nearly all the liquid has been absorbed. It's still a little bit so it's, it's sort of fluid but not run. And that's exactly how you want it. I'm going to switch all that off. Okay, you take it off there, let the steam go, and then we are going to put in our parmesan. As you can see, there's a little knob of butter there. Why does he do that? Is that Mr. Roberts being slightly overindulgent and French? No, actually, the Italians do this. It's to create a special sheen in the sauce. So in that goes, I'm going to stir that in like that. And then we're going to put some parmesan in. Now you can either put a bit of most of the parmesan in and then save some to sprinkle on the top. Let's do that, shall we? When I was younger, I was <laughs> I was forever making these sorts of risottos with far too much parmesan. And I, it took me a long time to learn that you don't need to do that. You only need a little handful because there's so much flavour elsewhere. And if you put in loads of parmesan in gin, it doesn't really end up tasting very much except parmesan. Which slightly <laughs> ruins the point of it, doesn't it? Here's my parsley. In it goes, like that. There we are. And here's a little chef's tip. A very, very, like a little dash of wine. I mean, literally, a few drops, like that, at the end, just to bring up the little wine aspect of it. You don't have to do that. That's just me being a little bit silly, but it's fun. So there we have a finished risotto, okay, sprinkled with parmesan like that. Anybody can make this. Now look, you've got to be patient. It Sometimes it takes a little while to learn how to do it, but it's worth persevering, as it is in everything in life. And we're going to make sure that Imogen tries this. You are going to try it, aren't you? Okay, excuse me. That's I get. And there we go. There you go, you take it. What do you say? You'd better say it's nice because I'm in front of all my pupils here. It's delicious. Say that to the camera, please. It is delicious. Excellent, thank you very much indeed. So, there, gentlemen, a risotto. Now, 
Uh, there will be a reward when I next see you if you film yourself cooking this. Um, but I need one person in your house to be a neutral taster. Okay, whoever that is. And they're going to give a judgment on how well you've done this. So good luck. Try cooking. Serious cooking. I mean, baking is fantastically good fun. And if you're doing that, excellent. I want you to go another step now and try some more complicated dishes. Have fun. And the most important thing at the moment is stay safe. Look after your family. Okay, see you later. Bye.